Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. We'll start with a new series about electric circuits and this will be our example about a voltage follower. So we will discuss the complete set of the op-amp circuits in the first list and also move on to BGT, MOSFET, diode circuit, etc. In this case I will specifically look at the voltage follower, it's also called the buffer, and why we need that. And of course we will look at the calculations and also the simulations in SPICE to verify our calculations. So let's look at the situation here. We have two separate electric circuits given, circuit A and circuit B. Circuit A is considered as a voltage source and has also two resistors. And circuit B is just one resistor, it's called, called RL. Now, it looks actually like this, so the circuit B, I mean A, is Vs and R1 and R2 in this configuration and the voltage here between the resistor R2 is called Va. That is the representation for this circuit A. For circuit B is just the load, resistor RL, a simple resistor just one and this is represented by this and it is now the resistor voltage Vb which we measure here. And there's values are shown here so what we want and what we like to know and discuss here is the following. Describe the effect of connecting the circuit B directly to circuit A. So we will first look at that. In the second case we will look at the situation how we can reduce or eliminate the effect due to this direct con uh, connection because we will see in question A when we discuss that that something is happening with the circuit. Because circuit A, before it was connected to circuit B, it produces some voltage here and that will change and we will see why that happens. So let's then move on and this will be then connected and we would like to know what is really happening when we connect to circuit A and B. So let's look at the solutions. Okay, now the connections of circuit A and B directly. Before we move on, let's then look at the circuit A just as an independent circuit, just separate. Using divided rule, voltage divided rule, we can say the following. We can say, okay, we would like to know this voltage. We can say R2 over R1 plus R2 times the Vs. We know Vs, we also know R1 and R2 from the example. Now, we can just substitute the values with 400 over 500 times 10, and you will get exactly 8 volts. So we can say independently, circuit A will produce Va of 8 volts. Okay. Now, if I now connect those two, so circuit A and circuit B together, what happens? Now circuit A will produce some VA, independently also some current. Now it has also VB here and also its own current. But now the question is, are these two the same? It must be, of course, if you connect them together, but it is, is that still 8 volts? That is really uh, important because sometimes you design a circuit or a part of your complex circuit, another one, your colleague will also design a part of the circuit and then you will connect them together and you assume then this voltage is still the same and also the, let's say, the current from the circuit A. So is that really the case? Let's see. Now, if I now connect them, this circuit will actually be produced. So we have now Vs, R1 and R2 also, and now we have an RL here in parallel to R2. So the circuit does change, certainly, and we have now VA here, but it is actually a new VA. It is not the same VA, actually. Why? Let's now also denote the uh, node X and Y here, because the connect by connecting circuit B to A, we actually change the load. So the load, or the R2, is now in parallel with RL. So the resistance between node X and Y is not anymore R2 only. So that will definitely change the situation because now you get actually this pink box and that is now a new resistor RP. And that is actually a parallel combination of R2 and RL. And that will is given by this formula. We have discussed this, of course, in the previous videos in great detail. And the formula is this. And if I now work it out, 400 for R2, 50 for the load, RL, and I have now exactly 400 over 9 ohms and approximately 44.44 ohms. So I go down from, let's say, if I look at R2, from 400 to all the way to 44.44 ohms. So that is a quite a reduction. And we know from this formula, if I again use the voltage divided rule on this new circuit, 
this one, I will have VA is equal to RP over R1 plus RP, not anymore R2 and R2 here, times VS. And that will produce definitely a lower voltage because now we have a lower volt uh, resistor here. And that will go from 8 volts all the way to 3.077 volts. So due to direct connection, I actually made my load voltage reduce from 8 volts to all the way to 3.077 volts. That is due to direct connection. That is actually a problem. So we actually assumed everything was fine independently and we got 8 volts now by connecting just one resistor we actually made a huge difference and huge change in our load voltage and that's of course not what we want. So how can we tackle this is also the, now the situation for B. How can you reduce or eliminate the effect due to this direct connection? Let's look at it. Okay, so we can use a voltage buffer that is one of the options to eliminate this, almost eliminate this problem. And a buffer is shown actually this, in this uh, symbol. So this is actually an operational amplifier. It is powered by the way, so we actually never, almost never show the power connections. And we have an input and we have also one out, uh, output. So we have one input, one output. You can also see the negative feedback here going from the output node to the inverting input of the op amp. What's happening? Let's see. Now, the connection now will be like this. So we have still our circuit A, this part, and circuit B is just our load. Now we have the voltage here, VA, which was actually our original voltage, and this voltage B. The situation is now the following. We would like to have the VB is equal to VA, actually. Because when I connect the R load, I don't want to change that R VA actually what I have before, uh, where, there, where there is no RL. So if I now denote this node as V plus, which is the non-inverting input of the operational amplifier, and this part is the inverting input of the operational amplifier, we have now the following situation. Due to negative feedback, because there's a negative feedback going from out to the inverting input of this op amp, we have the following situation. The op amp tries to make these two nodes, node voltages, exactly equal to each other due to that negative feedback. And that is, you can just assume and understand in ideal situations, and we have then V plus is equal to V minus. So if you have voltage here, it must make that voltage equal to that. Now we know V plus is equal to VA. That's just this node voltage going from this all the way to the ground. And we also know V minus here is actually this, using this just wire here, which is this VB. Oh, now we can say V plus is equal to V minus, and V plus is VA, V minus is VB. That means VA is equal to VB. Now, perfect, exactly what we wanted. We would like to have the VA is equal to VB. We don't want it anything that is dropping or changing. That means actually this is also 8 volts. Now, this is exactly what we wanted. This is now actually a solution, uh, one of the solutions for you in this problem. So we have actually this circuit before that was 8 volts. This circuit gave us a, a much smaller vo voltage because that RL was connected to R2 and that dropped a lot. And that gave us 3.077 volts. Now we have actually solved the uh, situation now using this voltage buffer or uh, the voltage follower. So voltage stays 8 volts using the voltage follower. Okay, now let's also look at the simulation because we can also simulate this, these three circuits so separately and then see what's happening. So I start with that and then do this and also do that. Now these are the results. You can see the first circuit here. You can see direct uh, actually only the circuit A and you can see here it's measured as 8 volts. If I now connect directly the RL here, which is with this one, to this one, you can see here 3.077 volts. Also, of course, here because that do those are parallel. This is, by the way, a voltage pin, which measures actually the voltage at this node with respect to ground. Now, I have now an operational amplifier, which is an ideal amplifier, operational amplifier. So we have here then the negative feedback connection. This is still circuit A. This is circuit B, just the pure resistor. Now we can see VA is 8, but VB is also 8. That is just due to that voltage follower or buffer. So we have actually also proving that that the simulation results, uh, using the simulation result, we have what we have calculated. Let's also see that in the actual SPI simulator and also see what's happening, what kind of 
uh, issues we have there. So let's now jump to the spy simulator and also discuss more details in there. So we are in the spy simulator. You can see again the three circuits. This is the circuit V, the circuit A, with only V, uh, the circuit A. This is circuit A, and then the connecting to that is the circuit B, which was the load. And we have here now the circuit A again, and our uh, buffer, the voltage follower, and then the circuit B connected via that buffer. Now if I now do here analysis, DC analysis, and calculate the node voltages, that's actually what I have done, and I got this result. This is also what I have presented before we moved on to this SPI simulator. Which also can do, because we can now measure with this pen, pen here, on each uh, element, the voltage and the current. If I now, for example, go to this node, you can see it is 8 volts. And if I now go to this node, it's also 8 volts. So it is really uh, proving that these two are exactly equal to each other. If I now click on this, for example, you can also see what kind of current and voltage that has. That was, of course, not the question. But it can do more. You can also say, okay, this current was now 20 milliamps in the original case. When I connect now the RL, what happened now, you get now almost 7.7 .7 milliamps, or it dropped for this resistor. That's actually also why the voltage dropped. And this current now become 61.5 milliamps. So that is actually the reason also why you have this voltage drop, because those two together created a much, much smaller resistor than the 400 uh, ohms, so it became became actually for 44.44 ohms. There's also a reason why we have actually larger current here, because again, look at the original circuit, circuit A. If I click on this one, I can see the current flowing to from left to right is 20 milliamps, and also here actually. But now in the second case, when the load is connected directly to circuit A, this will definitely increase. So it goes from 20 milliamps to 69.2 milliamps. So let's again see, this is the original case. This is the direct connected. Now you get 69.2 milliamps. So you go from 20 to 69 approximately. So almost 3.5 times larger. Let's just do this smaller equivalence uh, resistance here. If I now go here again, that is now the situation using the buffer. The current must, of course, stay the same and exactly 20 milliamps. And this is, of course, also 20 milliamps. And now you can, of course, ask the question, how does this happening? Because now we have, of course, 8 here, 8 here. That is somehow also here, 8 here. That is due to that vo uh, voltage buffer. It tries to make these two connections or two nodes equal to each other. Of course, you need to pay something for that because that doesn't happen, uh, doesn't happen actually for the nothing. So there is no free launch. And this op-amp must be also powered, so you need power supplies in order to have this action, otherwise it will never happen. So you don't, you need an active device, it will not work with a passive device. So that is of course what you need to add to your circuit. Alright guys, this was this for this example about the voltage follower. I will move on with the next examples, considering discussing the inverting, non-inverting amplifiers and also more examples using different circuits like summing amplifier and difference amplifier and I will consider more examples in the topic of operational amplifiers and also BGT, MOSFET and diodes. So stay tuned and if you have any questions, comments, please let me know about this uh, videos. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topic. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.